Hi everyone, my name is Dan and I'm a mental health pharmacist and today I wanted to talk about a virtually unknown treatment for depression that's FDA approved called cranial electrical stimulation or CES. And I actually found out about this by looking at different types of stimulation, um, brain stimulation treatments for depression. So first I started with electroconvulsive therapy or ECT and this is actually really effective for the treatment of depression. It's something like four times more effective than medications, but there are some issues with ECT. So there's some side effects like memory loss and headaches, and the person has to be put under general anesthesia, and um, the appointments usually take an hour or two, so it's time consuming. Um, so ECT wasn't something I was going to try. Um, the next stimulation therapy that I found was transcranial magnetic stimulation. So this has some advantages over ECT, but in a direct comparison, it wasn't as effective. So the advantages are that there's no anesthesia required and the patient can just go to the appointment and have the, mag, um, the magnet put onto their head and magnetic pulses go into the brain and activate certain brain areas. The main issue with um, transcranial magnetic stimulation is that the treatment to start is usually five times a week and again you have to go into the doctor's office so it's an hour a day five times a week it's a huge time commitment especially for someone that has a full-time job and then the third type of stimulation um, treatment for depression that's FDA approved is a vagus nerve stimulator and this is interesting, but it actually requires a surgical procedure to implant the device under the collarbone, and then electrodes are fed up to the vagus nerve to stimulate the, the nerve from that way. So I found all these types of brain stimulation treatments, but they all had these negatives, whether it be a surgical procedure or anesthesia or this time commitment of going to the doctors. So as I looked into those, I was able to find um, CES, so CES devices were invented in the Soviet Union in the 1950s, and then it came over to the States in the 1960s. And the biggest benefit here is that it can be done in the comfort of your own home. It still actually does require a prescription because it's considered a class three medical device, but I was actually able to obtain my prescription online without seeing anyone. Um, so it was a pretty easy workaround for that. The way that CES devices work is still not completely understood, but there's a few hypotheses. So one is that it decreases rumination loops in an area of the brain called the default mode network. And that's theorized to help with decreasing rumination, which can help with depressive thoughts and help with depression in that way. The second way is that it can alter certain brain waves. Um, it's been shown to decrease delta waves, which is associated with deep sleep, while increasing alpha waves, which is a type of brain wave that's increased through meditation. So it's supposed to produce a calm yet alert state at the same time. And the final way is that it affects neurotransmitters and affects other substances in the brain. So it increases endorphins and it increases serotonin by 50%. And serotonin is, the effects of serotonin are increased by antidepressant medications. And it also decreases the stress hormone cortisol. So it's not completely understood, but there's a few ways that this potentially might work. It might work um, through a combination of all three of these mechanisms. So one of the best parts about CES treatment is that adverse events are really rare and there's no true contraindications, although it's not recommended in pregnancy. So adverse events happen in about 1% of people and the most common are skin irritation from the electrodes or headaches. Um, other than that, it seems to be a pretty safe treatment and doesn't have some of the side effects that other stimulation therapies have. Next, I looked at the evidence um, behind CES. I found a Cochrane Review, which is a well-known uh, organization that does meta-analyses. So they group together a bunch of different trials and boil it down into one. And they weren't able to find high quality trials. So they concluded that CE, they concluded that they couldn't make a determination if CES is safe or effective for the treatment of depression. So then I started looking at some individual trials. I found a trial from the United States 
that looked uh, to see if CES was effective in treating patients with anxiety and depression. And this trial stood out to me because they used a sham device for the placebo arm of the trial. So they gave half the patients a real CES device and the other half a sham device that didn't actually work. Um, because one of, the, one of the problems with CES devices is that it could have a high placebo effect. So you think that it's doing something in your brain, so then you think that your symptoms of depression are improving. And what they were able to find in this trial was both the anxiety and depression scores were decreased further in the actual device group as compared to the sham device group. So it seemed like there was some pr promising evidence there. I then found another study from um, Massachusetts General Hospital, and this was in treatment-resistant depressed patients, so they already tried a few things, they were currently on an antidepressant, and they did a similar thing. So they either gave them a CES device or a sham device, and this trial didn't show any difference between the sham device and the CES device. So I think this is why that this um, device is FDA cleared, FDA approved, and it doesn't really show its head too much in psychiatry or the treatment of depression because the evidence is a little mixed. A lot of the evidence is old and a lot of the evidence is kind of weak. So until we have stronger trials, it's um, probably not gonna be a first line choice for a lot of psychiatrists. So finding a CES device was actually a pretty interesting experience because online there's everything from $100 homemade devices to FDA approved devices that cost $700. So I needed to find something in between. Um, I luckily was able to find a company and a product called CES Ultra. It ended up still being fairly expensive. It cost me around $250. And again, you need a prescription for this, but you were able to get the prescription from CES Ultra for another $20. So I, I got the prescription, I got the device, and it came in a few weeks later. So this is what the kit looks like here. So it's um, relatively small, and it's all packaged in here. There's the gelled electrodes on top, the device, the wires, and then the ear clips. So it's recommended to use the device twice a day to start. So. Generally, I was using it for 30 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes around dinner time when I got home from work. So the device is about this size, so maybe like a thick cell phone. There's the wire that has two different ports, and then first I'll attach the ear clips. So they just slide right on like that. And then you're actually supposed to wet the um, wet the ends of these with like contact solution or salt water or even tap water works and then you just clip them on your ears like so then to turn the device on there's a dial here so it clicks and the light turns on you can select the time you want and then the dial also affects the dose so you can increase the the stimulation since it's not wet, I can't feel anything, but when I do wet the ear clips first, I get like a pins and needle feeling in my ear. I actually generally use the gelled electrodes more. I think they work a little bit better for me and I like the way they feel. So you just, I just unplug the, or unattach the ear clips and now I'm um, clipping in the gelled electrodes. So this is what they look like and they go under your ear and behind your jaw, like so, and they, they just stick there. Um, it's generally best to clean your neck with soap and water because oil can decrease the efficacy of the device. Uh, oil on the skin can. So again, you just click the device on, and as you increase the dose, I can feel um, a little bit of tingling. It's not unpleasant at all. It's kind of interesting feeling. And if you move around and turn your head, you can kind of change where you feel more of the stimulation than others. So again, I use this for 30 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes after work for about a month, almost every single day. I didn't really notice any acute changes, as in like right after I used the device, I didn't really feel much different. 
but overall, as I tracked my mood, I noticed that my irritability was down a little bit and I was actually sleeping a little bit better as well. Along with being approved for depression, it's also approved for anxiety and insomnia. So that makes sense for me sleeping a little bit better. Uh, I now don't generally use the device every day. I, since I did that initial month of using it twice a day, almost every day, I now kind of only use it whenever I feel like I could use a boost or just kind of when I feel like it. But I do find myself going back to it um, a few times a week. So it still has found a way into my routine a little bit. So overall, um, it's an interesting device so to stimulate your brain and you don't need to go into the doctor's office to do it. Uh, it has some evidence for depression, anxiety, and insomnia and is approved for that. But some of the evidence is a little weak, old, or conflicting. So uh, it's potentially worth a try. I kind of found it interesting, and I hope you enjoyed and learned something by watching. Thanks so much.